my tea's all. That's right. The conference is just energized. It's buzzing. Connections are being made right and left. Cross-pollination is happening. And we're just so excited to have every member of our society. I'm here in Boston and I, this is the first day of MIT Solve and I'm so excited. Um, I'm going to be meeting all of these solver teams from all around the world uh, solving global challenges. Um, so let's go take a look. Okay, the craziest thing just happened. So I just, uh, I'm staying at this hotel. I asked this girl if she could videotape me for this first, very first vlog that I'm doing. And this is insane. She works in climate change. And then I was like, oh, my channel is Female Founders Lab. And she's like, oh my God, I already subscribed to your channel. And like, she showed me and there's like 40 of you on here and she's one of them. And I'm literally like on the other side of the country right now. <laughs> so, what's your name? My name is Andrit. Okay, Andrit. Yeah. Andrit, yeah, okay. basically. You're yeah. from Germany? Yeah, I'm from Hamburg. I just got here to Boston uh, yesterday. And yeah, I just met you now. And it's super interesting. I mean, I was I was in this conference, like, we were working on uh, climate change. And yeah, we, ha we have a project um, for this in Germany because there's a really big law coming. And we activists, we, we kind of look and see what's going on and um, yeah, so we're working on it. And then I met you and it was just like with one ear, like hearing what you're doing and I think it's so interesting. And um, that's so crazy because like we're not even at the conference you guys, like I'm at my hotel, like this is totally random. And so I was like, hey, like will you film me? Yeah. And then later you, uh, you were like, oh, what's the channel? I'm like, like what are you doing? And, and like, oh, I already subscribe <laughs> yeah like that to me that goes to show that we are magnets to the people who are like yeah, there absolutely. for our message and our vision yeah absolutely like it doesn't even matter like sometimes I feel like I have to try so hard on social media but like it's just yeah. kind of like how, it's like she found me from Germany like just probably just browsing the internet or something yeah I was just I was just scrolling and I was I d you actually, I found you on YouTube, like a video was just came up and I was like, oh, it's interesting, let's click on it. And then I just already like subscribed and it's, yeah, That's it's cool. pretty cool. It's like, tell me about like what you're working on, like the climate change stuff. Yeah. So um, there's an organization, it's a global organization, it's called Fridays for Future. I don't know if you know Greta Thunberg? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so it's like her organization basically. Oh, but that's there are, right. I had heard yeah, of it. Yeah. And there are, there are many like, groups and campaigns all over the world and I'm working on it um, for, for Germany and there's a big um, campaign coming um, because as I said, there's this big law that's coming in summer. We have one big law in, on Eastern um, because of our new climate minister. And uh, we're working on it because it's, so Germany is one of the most, like most developed, most industry companies who are spending so much carbon. And yeah, so we, we really think that they have to develop like into climate neutral, um, industry and yeah we're working on it because we only have like one planet and I think it's really worth like fighting for even with like, like traveling and I've like really struggled with traveling the world and doing this campaign because it's so it's not it's not like naturally coming together but yeah. I think it's really important to do this because if we want to like change the world or making a big difference we have to work on it yeah and it's so uh, doesn't matter what you're doing if you're working if you're a student if you're going to school if you're like whatever you can always do something and i think that's like yeah i think it's really important i'm gonna rest my arm for one second <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is like i didn't bring a tripod but i'm like you know what like it'll be it's my first vlog so it's fine yeah um so I have this thing called goddess leadership and I believe that 
I say your vision chooses you. Mm -hmm. Like there's something inside of you that just like pushes you to do this work and sacrifice. Like you were saying, it's so hard to be traveling globally and doing this sort of work and like fighting the system. Mm -hmm. And so do you believe that there's like a personal impetus or like a way where it's like you're stewarding something that's bigger than you? Yeah, and I it, this really came to me when I when I was in Germany and I I was basically in my A level and I just I just recognized that there is there are just people who don't think about it and I always felt I wasn't like the only one who's thinking of it and I'm I'm the wrong person because I'm always thinking about oh we have to do like we have to improve our system like our system is wrong and I was yeah, like totally. I was like I was like I can't be the only one dude so literally I, yeah this is the purpose of the female founders lab that I believe that women are being seated with ideas for yeah. systems change yeah. and it's something where we feel like we're wrong or off or like and nobody alone. else cares yeah, yeah absolutely but we're not alone and this is proof. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. And I found this amazing campaign with these amazing people, and they're always like, I, I'm coming out of these meetings, and they're like always so inspiring and so just driving forward, and that's like, really amazing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Uh, well, tell me your name again. Andrit. Andrit. Yeah. That's so nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Nilima. Nilima. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I will. You were asking me something earlier. I don't think I. Um, you were asking me. What? Something. Yeah. What? 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 Just how this idea of the of the female founder. Like, yeah. To totally. Them. So I've been in the impact entrepreneurship space for about fifteen years. Mm -hmm. So I was a business case writer mm -hmm. at the University of Michigan, like writing MBA case studies on okay. social impact and emerging mm -hmm. markets. So like understanding how businesses can solve global challenges. Mm -hmm. And so then like I moved to India mm -hmm. and I lived there for like six years and I ran an accelerator for social innovators and then wow. I launched a sex education company to break the taboo on sex ed in India. Yeah. And that was a crazy journey because I went through like the whole mm -hmm. startup ecosystem and I didn't mm -hmm. feel like seen or supported. Yeah. Um, because it just feels like very cookie cutter. It's like, here's how you make a pitch to an investor. Yeah. But it's like kind of like what we were talking about where it's like, are there any other people like thinking about systems change in the same way? Mm -hmm. So that led me to start the Female Founders Lab, which is uh, an accelerator for systems change makers like us. It's really amazing. It's, um, <laughs> yeah. I really feel appreciated that I met you. Thank you so much. Aww, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We know that we are the ones we have been waiting for. We are the ones that grandma's been praying for. You are all here today taking time out of your busy lives because you are committed to using technology and innovation in service of solving the world's most intractable challenges. In service of the most marginalized and underserved among us. And that is what Solve is all about. Our mission is to drive innovation to solve world challenges. We see ourselves as a marketplace for social impact innovation, and we bring together innovators, cross-sector leaders, academics, and more to find connections and broken partnerships to bring forth innovative solutions and help better the world. Today, for the first time in three years, this marketplace is back in action, live and in person. I'm very excited. <laughs> MIT Solve, that's right. So, like, how is the conference going so far for you? The conference is just energized, it's buzzing, connections are being made right and left, cross-pollination is happening, and we're just so excited to have every member of our society here. Awesome. Table. And so like where did you yeah. come here from? 
I came here from Botswana, um, a country just next to South Africa, just north of South Africa. How long so, was that flight? <laughs> 23 hours. <laughs> 23 hours? Did you have a stopover? Um, we had a stopover in uh, Doha, Qatar. Um, and then it was 13 hours from Doha to Boston, so it was a very long journey. <laughs> That's cool. Um, how was the experience for you at Sal? It's been amazing. I've got to meet a lot of great people like you. <laughs> <laughs> What's your venture? Um, so what we do is simple. We connect the unconnected. We enable the rural poor in Africa to have access to internet without data bundles, smartphones or Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, so what you find in Africa is that nearly 80% of all mobile phone users use feature phones, which means they can't access um, the advantages that come with being connected and we try to bridge that digital gap through our solutions. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank That's awesome. You. It was so nice meeting you. And nice to meet if you have you. any message for like founders, female founders from around the world who have like ideas, what would you tell them? I would tell them <laughs> I would tell them to be very persistent. As long as you're persistent and you have a strong conviction, you'll definitely make it. Now with the new digital economy, the main assets are on the one hand the knowledge of, 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 of professionals and on the other hand it's data and it's computing power. And the thing is you can concentrate all of them in one place. You can concentrate all the data of the world and all or most of the computing power of the world in just one place or a few places. And the more the economy depends on these resources, if we don't take counter actions, we might see the creation of the most unequal economy and therefore unequal system that, that, that ever existed. This is the kind of high road to dictatorship and to economic monopoly as well. And finally, that whenever you increase surveillance, top-down surveillance, we must simultaneously increase bottom-up surveillance. Here, Toby, I'm with Digital Democracy. We've built a tool called Mapeo. We've co-designed it with indigenous partners in the Amazon, and it's being used for mapping ancestral territory, mapping for indigenous land claims, monitoring of various environmental threats, including illegal logging and mining, and it's now being exported and used by other groups around the world who've followed the success of our partners in the Amazon. It's being used in Southeast Asia uh, and Eastern Africa. And currently, our close partners are using it to monitor and defend more than 5 million hectares of territory. So day one was really good. So it started out with a plenary with all of these amazing speakers, including a Nobel Prize winner from Iran, um, and I think like what so a few highlights like one of my favorite things yesterday was that they started with a land invocation and they honored all of the natives um, whose land was stolen to build MIT and I thought that was so beautiful and so indicative of the way that consciousness is rising like even our oldest most East Coast institutions are now recognizing um, the holistic nature of our systems. Peoples as the traditional stewards of the land where this event is taking place and the enduring relationships that exist between them and their traditional unceded territory of the Wapanog Nation. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from this territory and we honor and respect the many diverse indigenous people connected to this land of which we gather and perform from time immemorial. Thank you. Hey Stephanie! Hi Nalima! <laughs> so, where are we right now? We are at Solve at MIT in Boston. More specifically, we're backstage where <laughs> she's working. She like is like doing the slides that go up on the presentation and then she like sneaked out for a sec <laughs> and then it turns out that like she has ambition to start her own venture. We started talking and that's how I got to go backstage. So like, this is like a little studio we got going here. <laughs> What's the like, most exciting thing about this event for you so far? Watching the solvers pitch. I, I, I'm really interested and they only get three minutes to do it, you know? And yeah. so it, it's very interesting to me how they can condense so much information and make such an impact within three minutes. And all of their, their companies are just 
fascinating to me. Yeah. yeah. What we do is we develop a biotechnological platform where we use bacteria as a cell factory to upcycle organic waste into a renewable and sustainable protein ingredient to replace the unsustainable soybean and fish meal in the aquafit nutrition. Utiba is a technology workforce development company that helps Africans to learn advanced technology skills and move into new jobs. When I realized that too many menstruators were excluded from the market for peer products, I knew I had to become an advocate as well as an entrepreneur. I'm Lisa Yarani from Indonesia, from um, CLSI, and our project is Seal Fisheries. Basically, trying to protect what uh, Professor Charles just alluded the these areas not to be burned um, by making fish extract. Um, they can actually provide alternative livelihood to community and increase their income by around 300%. Where did you come in from? Bulgaria. Nice. How long is that flight? Um, seven hours. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Where did your idea come from? Well, it started back in 2017. Um, I was back home in Bulgaria. I was witnessing kind of the conditions of refugees, uh, and I wanted to do something to help them and to uh, support them in gaining employment, earning their livelihoods. Um, so this is how I created the company. So the basic mission is to connect refugees and other conflict-affected people with work. What stage are you at and what are you looking for from this conference? Well, um, we're starting to fundraise for our seed round, so we're still in the early stages. Uh, but I'm really looking to connect with like uh, fundraising support and you know there are a lot of companies that offer mentorship and advice and reviewing our pitch deck all of that preparation that needs to be done before actually starting to uh, raise money. If they're not values aligned, if you don't have values aligned investors at your cap table, they may be pushing you to treat your human capital in a way that doesn't align with your own values. And so what do you do then? And what we've been able to bring to the table as K4 Capital is that we've been that board seat and that board member who can help hold the line to remind that entrepreneur what their values were when they started. I find this term a little bit weird. We want um, money to act as medicine and love and not extraction, which it tends to do. So that's weird coming from a venture capitalist, I know. Um, but we, we want to keep money, keep resources in what we call wealth, but that's human wealth, inside communities. We don't want to extract it like traditional venture capital tries to extract the wealth. You know, two become unicorns, 18 fail. That's not us. We want the tide to, to lift all boats. <laughs> Concentrated in certain places in the world. So, for example, there's uh, 
have a strong concentration of sprinting talent in Jamaica. We still don't have an explanation for that. I can say categorically that I wouldn't have qualified for the Games had it not been for my time in Austria, one of the strongest nations on the planet. And I probably wouldn't have survived my Olympic run if it wasn't for the help from the Romanian ski technicians to help me tune my skis. Now, global problems require a global perspective to be solved. Um, and the Olympic spirit is about competition but supporting one another. And I think that the Olympics highlight our differences but also celebrate them. And this is a strategy or a spirit that we can and should use when we're trying to solve some of the world's biggest problems. Oh, amazing, absolutely. I think, you know, yeah. That was the last closing session of SALT. So I think this has been amazing, probably one of the most values aligned communities that I've been a part of. Um, and just met so many amazing people and I'm leaving with so much energy to go take back to my work back in LA. Thanks for organizing an amazing event, everyone. You all must be exhausted. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed watching my vlog and if you loved it then please comment and let me know what resonated and subscribe to my channel and if you're a founder looking for support then click the link to apply for a call in the description box below and I can't wait to continue on this journey with you. Oh,